Armed with the basic intuition of monopoly profit maximization, let's dig a little deeper and ask, how does the monopoly price depend on the elasticity of demand? Think about a good with very elastic demand, and therefore a relatively flat demand curve. For a good like this to sell one more unit, the monopolist doesn't need to lower the price much. Just a small reduction will do the trick. So the poisoning effect is small. If the monopolist wants to sell one more unit, he doesn't have to lower prices on previous units all that much. Now think about a good with a very inelastic demand, and therefore a relatively steep demand curve. For a good like this, to sell one more unit, the monopolist must lower the price a lot. In this case, the poisoning effect is large. For these inelastic goods, the monopolist has less incentive to sell more, since these extra sales greatly reduce the price he can charge for previous sales. Taken together, this means that relative to competitive market, monopolists will sell less and therefore price higher as the demand for the good is more inelastic. Okay, but then why don't monopolists just charge a high price all the time? Didn't we say the monopoly means the consumers have no other options in the market? The answer is that although consumers have no alternatives within the market, they often do have alternatives outside that market. They can substitute to other goods that compete with the monopolist good. So what eventually constrains the monopolists from raising prices past a certain point is the degree to which their good is substitutable with other goods. This is precisely what is captured by the elasticity of demand. So monopoly firms can't just charge whatever they want, but they do have more control over the price than competitive firms do. We say that monopoly firms have market power, the ability to price at a level higher than marginal cost. Competitive firms have no market power. If they try to set a price higher than marginal cost, consumers will turn to other firms in the market, selling at a lower price. Monopoly firms have some market power, but this power is not unlimited. Monopolists can set a price higher than marginal cost, but only to the extent that consumers don't choose to leave that market entirely. And that extent is determined by the demand elasticity for the good. So market power is higher the more inelastic the demand for the good. In this case, the monopolist can raise the price without losing many consumers to another market. But as the demand elasticity rises, the monopolist has to act more like a competitive firm. In fact, with perfectly elastic demand, the monopolist has no market power and he's forced to set the price equal to marginal cost, just like a competitive firm. So far we've been simplifying things by saying demand for a good is either elastic or inelastic. In reality, demand can be more elastic or more inelastic, depending on which part of the demand curve we look at. This is important for monopoly firms looking to maximize profit. Linear demand curves, like the ones we've been using, are most elastic at the top. In the elastic region of the demand curve, marginal revenue from monopolies is positive. In these regions, the smaller poisoning effect that comes from selling one more unit does not outweigh the revenue the firm gets from the extra sale. Likewise, these linear demand curves are most inelastic at the bottom. In the inelastic regions of the demand curve, marginal revenue from monopolies is negative. In those regions, the poisoning effect from selling one more unit is relatively large and overpowers the revenue the firm gets from the extra sale. Remember, profit maximizing firms set marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. In the real world, marginal cost is positive. It's hard to think how producing 101 units could ever cost less than producing only 100. This means that monopoly firms cannot maximize profit on inelastic regions of the demand curve. Marginal cost can never equal marginal revenue in those regions because marginal revenue is negative in those regions. So a profit maximizing firm will always select its output level in the elastic portion of the demand curve. If it's ever producing an inelastic portion of the demand curve where marginal revenue is negative, it should cut back on production. Why? Because the negative marginal revenue for additional unit will always be less than the positive marginal cost for that unit. The monopoly firm will be losing money on that unit. The firm might still be making a positive profit overall, but it wouldn't be maximizing that profit. 